Blog Talk Radio. What's going on, folks? It's your boy Long Beach Joe here. Right after watching the Jets be defeated by the Chargers, 34 to 28. What a game. I mean, started out, things looked like they were going well. We got out to a you know an early lead. We were able to get a stop. We were able to uh, get a block punt. Henry Anderson, things looked like they were going well. Things looked like they were just, they were going to go our way. That's what it looked like. P. Ryan scores an early touchdown. We're hyped. We're hyped. Chargers come back down. We get a fumble caused. We get the ball. We know we're deep. You know what I'm saying? They got into the red zone. We stopped them damn near at the goal line. And then Joe Flacco comes out and throws a pick six. (laughs) And things just started spiraling down for quite a bit. We were able to fight, though. They came back after the pick, some horrific play calling. Didn't weren't able to answer. The Chargers scored again. We were able to hang around. We came out in the second half. We were throwing deep. We were trying to make adjustments. But the thing that killed us in this game as well was the penalties. We extended drives by the Chargers with our penalties. Nathan Shepard extended a drive with one of the worst roughing the passer penalties I've seen. That was dumb. We had a, a, another pass interference penalty. That was stupid. There were so many bad penalties and bad play calls in this game it was just so bad but we kept scrapping we kept fighting you know Ficken costed us he's missing extra points left and right get that guy out of here we were able to continue to fight and get ourselves back into the game Chris Herndon scored a touchdown for crying out loud Chris Herndon caught a touchdown Things were looking like they were turning up for us. Things were looking like they were going to change. It was going to be our time this time. We were going to be able to make a move. We were going to be able to pull ourselves together. Out of all the nonsense that we have done the entire game, we were still in it. We just couldn't get it done, man. We just couldn't get it done. And then we fell. We fell. I don't want to dump on the team. I don't. We made a lot of just dumb-ass decisions in this game. We did. A lot of horrific penalties like we do every game. That Flacco interception was horrific. But there were some bright spots as well. Henry Anderson finally showing up and doing something. Bright spot. Mims. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to talk about this kid. I'm not going to compare him to other people in the league right now. I know a lot of people have a lot of lofty expectations of him and all these things, but, man, that kid, that kid seems like he's going to be a go-to wide receiver for us. He's a playmaker, bro. You can see it. He was single-handedly responsible for so many of our drives continuing to be extended in this football game. So many. I'm so happy that he's on this football team. So happy. There was a couple of good things, but we did we did some really bad things. I don't want to go on and on because I got callers again. You can call in. It is five one five six zero two nine six three nine. Again, five one five six zero two nine six three nine is the number. Please call in. I want to hear your thoughts about this loss to the Chargers how you feel about this Jets team. Do not call into my show, Kirsten. I will get you out of here faster than you can even dream of. All right? I'll get you out of here. It's, it's just disappointing. It's so disappointing. We, we had high hopes. I, I felt it. I felt the energy. I felt the positivity. I felt like this was our time. This was the time. We were going to show the world. And things just didn't pan just didn't pan out for us. We just couldn't get a win, man. We couldn't do it. We just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. I'm going to go to my first caller, Elias. 
Elias, man, I want to get your thoughts on this Jets loss to the Chargers. And I want to get your thoughts on Mims, man. How do you feel about the way he played? Hey, Mims is a monster, man. we got to get that guy the ball more. That first yeah. half, I comment, I was thinking that first half, I was like, as a wide, I commented this in, in the chat. Has a wide receiver mm-hmm. caught a ball yet? And I don't think one did. Yeah. It was just all Frank Gore and throws to running ball, running back, and then Chris Herndon actually caught a ball. The dude who couldn't even dude couldn't catch the row row and finally caught a ball. So that was nice to see. <laughs> um, yeah. But man, that game was so boring. I'm not gonna lie. I pulled the I pulled the Joe Douglas and I passed out during the third quarter. I was so bored. <laughs> Well, look, first off, I want to thank you for calling in the lives. You know, I, you know, I understand why some people may have been, you know, completely just turned off by the game. But I, there were some things that some bright spots I was excited about, man. I really wanted to see us fight. And I, and I thought that we had some chances. But some of the things that we did in this game was horrific. Some of the mistakes we had, some of the penalties, that, that, that's what's frustrating me so much because it's just undisciplined football. What were your thoughts about that Nathan Shepard penalty where he gets up, you know, smacks Herbert after the slide and gets the gets the uh, rough and the passer call. How do you feel about that one, man? That's just that's unexcusable, man. Like as much as I'm I'm pro tank at this point, like that is just still infuriating to see. Like it's just, like yeah. the dude was sliding. Like you can't hit a guy when he's sliding. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Dude, it's just it's just mind boggling. It's just mind boggling. I just I just thought that that penalty, the one before the half, the pass interference penalty I thought was ridiculous as well. And that was on Millette. Which one? It's like come a million on. of them. <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, it was so frustrating, man. So frustrating to watch this. I'm just it's just blown away by the bonehead decisions we continue to make. But I tell you what, on the defensive side of the ball, away from Away from that horrific, the penalties and stuff by by Nathan Shepard and Millette, I thought that our corners, particularly Hall and Jackson, they, they did give up some stuff. But Hall also made some very key plays for us. That big tackle on Keenan Allen to, you know, stop their drive and give us the ball back, I thought that was huge. I thought that they looked decent on the day, especially early. There was some tight coverage from them. Um, I know Hall got that pass interference call early, but he was there. He wasn't getting beat, you know, consistently, at least, you know, in that, in that first half. Things kind of opened up a little bit more uh, as the game continued on. But I was, I was, you know, I thought that they played okay. I mean, what were your thoughts on our corners, and were you surprised that, you know, they just weren't getting just crushed early? Yeah, they were better than I thought. I thought Lamar Jackson was going to be bad, and there was that one touchdown he gave up, which, like, it looked like he was pretty close to batting down the ball, but that, uh, unfortunately he didn't. But, uh, um, yeah, better than I expected. Uh, Henry Anderson played very well. Like, he tried to show mm-hmm. up. But I got, here's my biggest issue this game. I don't understand why you had probably our best player, Sergio Castillo. He was playing yeah. well the past couple of weeks. And Sticken was hurt. But it's not like you're – why does Sticken have to play again if you got Sergio Castillo playing well? Like, it's not like Sticken's on yeah. some big contract. He's probably making, like, league minimum or something. Like, I don't get why you have to play him. Like, he's not good. And Sergio Castillo, the only football he missed was, was Glock in the Kansas City game. So, that, I didn't understand that whatsoever. But, man, I got one bright spot. I think Braden Mann played really well, too. I know, you know, no one really cared as much about, like, punting and stuff. But his punch, mm-hmm. he had some good punts there. Like, there's not really much to look, for, look to, like, what the punts were good. Who like offense was trash, defense was terrible. Um, at least in the first half, which this was like the most unjet like game because they actually did a little bit in the second half, which is mm. strange. But um, yeah, man, I just once they started getting Nims the ball, I I was I don't understand why they weren't doing it sooner. Like even if he's covered pretty well, like you still you know chuck it up to him. You might as well. Yeah, and that was, you know, especially going on down the stretch where we really saw that they were struggling to cover him. I was looking around like, hey, why aren't we seeing more of Mims? Why isn't Mims getting the ball more in, you know, within our offense? And 
I just felt like they should have came to him more. I know they went to him late again as well as that, on that final throw that I thought should have been a pass interference call. I really thought that he should have gotten that. Uh, he didn't end up getting it. Uh, but, you know, I, I just wish they'd implement Mims a little bit more. But I, I'm really excited about him going down the stretch. Um, you know, this, that kid really, really looked really solid in this football game. I just – I just didn't like, you know, some of the things that we did. And another thing that, you know, we talk about on a weekly basis is the Frank Gore and P. Ryan situation. And again, in this football game, we see Frank Gore still has more carries than P. Ryan. How are you feeling about that? And what are your thoughts about them continuing to grind Gore, you know, going late into these football games? Yeah, this this game was like a – it was almost like a ground and pound with core game plan, which I don't really understand too well. Um, I don't know, like – I don't want. I don't think they should be trying to win so much. And I think P. Ryan might even get you a better chance to win. But I think he like got hurt towards the end of the game, which sucks. Which I'd rather have Ty Johnson be our starting running back then. Yeah. At least he's got you yeah. know some some speed. You know, Gore is just like he can truck some guys, but he's so he's really slow. Like I, when we brought in Gore, I didn't like the signing because I knew Chase was gonna Chase loves him and he was gonna take away all the carries from Bell and then Bell's on now. Which of course we're running yeah. well now that we don't have him, which sucks. But um, uh, I just I like his role to be just a short yarded back on like third and one, second and three, something like that. Like short yarded situations when you just truck a few guys over, not like a pass catching back, which he caught a couple passes today. Not a, a he's not a number one running back, and we keep using him like one, which I don't like to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just tough, man. It's tough. I really thought we had our, we could possibly get ourselves a win today, but we just, just too many penalties, too many bad decisions, too many, the missed extra points down the stretch by thick, and we're just, you saw the impact of that as well, because we would have had to go for two. He should be cut right it's just now. Just tough, man. He should get cut right yeah. now. Yeah, he should you be gone. Him, he should man. absolutely go. Yeah, I, I don't understand. I don't understand why, you know. Why Castillo still wasn't in that spot. Ficken looked, looked terrible today. He really did. But, Elias, I got to keep getting to these callers, man. I want to thank you for calling in, bro. It was great to speak to you. Yeah, man, of course. All right, you have a good one. Oh, Elias calling in. Man, listen, it's tough. It is tough being a Jets fan, man. I really thought today was our day. Really felt like we had a chance. Really felt like we were going to get ourselves a W. But we just we couldn't get the job done, man. We just could not get the job done. Too many critical mistakes down the stretch. Too many bad situations we put ourselves in. But again, I, you know, there's some bright spots I'm excited by. But I'm gonna keep going back to the callers, man. Two zero one. I'm coming to you. Two zero one. I want to get your thoughts on this Jets team, the way that they played against the Chargers. How do you feel about Joe Flacco and the way that he played today? Hey, what's going on, Joe? Sean. I think uh I think What's going on, Sean? How's your day, man? It's going pretty good. Unfortunately we had to watch this terrible ball, but uh I think uh I think Flacco did okay, uh with the pieces that he had around him. I think uh that was a PI on Den- on Mims at the end of the game. I really think that was a PI right there. But hey, you know, you yeah. can't always get to our calls, you know. Um Yeah. Yeah. I'm just I'm I'm just I don't know, man. I'm just tired of watching this. Fuck. I'm just tired of watching the, these games. Watch man. it, watch I, it, watch I, it, watch it. I, no cursing on my show. Go ahead. I'm tired of watching these games, man. It's just it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. And uh, you know, Gase is not is not doing anything for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's it's so tough. It's so tough. You know, because like I, like I said earlier, you know, we started out, we got that block punt things were just looking up. And we were saying to ourselves, whoa, wait a minute. We got ourselves a turnover. We got an early score. Then they come down. We get a turnover again. You know what I'm saying? And then things just kind of fell apart. And then, you know, we kind of fell asleep for a second there. A lot of bumps up and down. You know, the the, the Chargers were still pushing, especially before the half. But we came out after the half, and it felt like we almost made an adjustment because we got more aggressive. We started taking shots down the field quite a bit. Perryman was getting some deep balls. He he got some shots. That's how he got his first touchdown was one of the deep shots right after the half. And we just started seeing that consistently. But then, again, I felt like 
with Mims in particular, here's a guy where we see that they really are struggling to cover him. They, they really were, you know, pretty much all game. You know, if it wasn't him could, making a great catch, it was, it was them, you know, giving a, a pass interference because he's running away from guys. I just wish that we would have targeted him more. Why not just feed him the rock, right? Exactly. For a dude that's what, he's been playing four games so far, you're starting to see yeah. that he's starting to become – number one and a lot of people you know I got high expectations for him but he's proven himself you know for a rookie like that to miss that much ball and to get back in there and play four NFL games for him to mm-hmm. to have the, he's trying to get double teamed I don't know if anybody's seen that he's yeah. trying to get double teamed Aaron and Crowder don't get double teamed Mims is a rookie he's getting double teamed talk to me <laughs> talk to me <laughs> This guy is making plays left and right, and it's like, wow, like yeah. we got a wide receiver, but, you know, I don't want to hear it from Gase. You know what I'm saying? Just feed him the ball. Give him more, give him the ball. Stop running the ball. We're 0-9. This is what I was saying in the message. We're 0-9. Why are we running the ball? We're killing the clock. We're killing the <sighs> clock. What are we doing? Oh. I don't understand. Oh my. I don't understand what we're doing. And I just at this point, let me ask you. What do you think needs to change? We're 0 and 10 now. What do you What do you think needs to change up to this point? Something has to like we need some type of some type of bright spot, you know, Monday morning or something. Something needs to change. Well, here's the deal: is that you know, I mean, I could say fire and gaze and all that, but at the end of the day, I mean, yes, he should be fired. He should have been fired weeks ago, though. But at the end of the day, you're still dealing with Daryl Loggins, who supposedly is the guy calling the plays at this point. I think what needs to change is our – there's so many things that need to change, but the two things that need to change right now is our, our ability our, – our, our assessment in critical moments. There's so many critical moments in the game where – particularly offensively where we need something, and it seems like the offensive coordinators don't understand. We, we were just talking about it. You're watching this game, and you're seeing that these guys can't cover mims. They can, not one-on-one. What? You're seeing that. So why is it that you and the offensive coordinator can't draw up something to make sure, okay, we're going to see, you know, if, if we're not, if we're not, you know, um, targeting him, we're going to make sure that he's going to be out there so that he's a decoy for something else that we're doing. We're going to make sure to, that we get him in a role. We're going to make sure that he is a guy that's going to be a focal point because we're seeing that we're struggling. If you go up against any other Offensive coordinator in the league, if their weapon, their guy that they know that they can attack you with, they're going to find ways to draw things up to get him to football. And I felt like yep. we weren't doing that enough. That's how I felt. Like, yep. we, we were seeing it. We're sitting back watching. You said it yourself. At some point, they were trying to double this guy. He's a rookie wide receiver. He's a rookie. Like, he's the only guy out here that they're trying to double. That's why a lot of these yep. other things were getting open because Perryman was able to run deep and all because he's got one on one coverage. He's just breaking open because these guys are so worried about Mims. Okay, well if you're yep. so worried about them, damn it, you're about to worry about them for the rest of the game. It's gonna be all yep. game where I'm gonna feed this young kid. He ain't gonna get tired. He's young. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know it ain't I like I'm running thirty seven year old Frank Gore. You know, I'm sorry. It's, go ahead. <laughs> You know, Franco is a great player, don't get me wrong, but we're not excited for that. You know, I know P. Ryan, I, I guess he just got an ankle, in, ankle injury, so, you know, he's out. But, you know, it's obvious this kid is special. You know, I'm not going to put a, too up much of a high ceiling on him, but as of right now, he's been consistent. Consistent, he keeps making these cre- these catches. I don't know. He's starting to look like a true number one for next year. I don't know. But, you know, it, yeah. it's – the losing mentality that Gase has, you know, if he doesn't believe in his team winning or he starts to see like they're slacking off, he starts to slack off. You know, I get, like you said earlier, you, uh, I was listening to what you were saying. You said uh, that our, our defensive coach, you know, he's been playing well for what he has. And I believe that, yeah. you know, he's not even ranked at the last in our defense. Even though we don't have anybody on defense like that, look at the numbers. He's yeah. not even ranked 30, 30th in anything you know he's close yeah. but not like Gates last in every category and he's working with yeah. less you know yeah. every game oh, oh last last time oh well look we can finally throw the ball deep because we have wide receivers come on you didn't even try it in any of the games when we were started started off we have Jeff Smith Jeff Smith's supposed to be fast you didn't even try it you know but now it's like 
you know, now we get into this Chargers game, and now you start to see that, that Mims can finally catch the ball, and now you want to start feeding him. And then the thing is, it makes me upset. It's just like, why don't you motion a little bit? Get these players off of him. You know, just start Hello. motioning things. <laughs> Figuring things out. You line this kid up one-on-one, they're going to know it's going to him. Like, motion it. Make it look different a little bit. That's why Tyreek Tariq can get open and the Chiefs have everybody else because, you know, they don't just make their offense so obvious. You know, it's so obvious yeah. we're going to Mims. Oh, oh, all right, it's one-on-one coverage. Okay, we get it. But how come we don't even throw the ball in the end zone to him at least? You know, we run the ball. I know it was productive, but there's going to be games where it's not going to be so productive with that running. Try to toss that ball up to Mims. Give him a chance in the end zone. You know, like why – give these rookies a chance. And it's just, you know, I, I'm still waiting on Cameron Clark to, to um, showcase himself. I don't know where he's at, you know. And uh, Morgan – Morgan, our, uh, our, what is it, our rookie quarterback? You know, I'm waiting on him, you know. I'm tired of watching Joe Flacco yeah. and Frank Ward, you know. It's, it's, it's just a waste of time, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's tough, man. It's tough. And like you said, I mean, you're spitting fire right now. It's like, dude, you got to do whatever you can to get the, get the ball in the hands of this kid. If you see that he's eating the way that he was eating today, some of the catches that he made, that one catch that he made to continue to extend the drive where he – pretty much just, you know, caught it jumping over a corner. It's like, come on. Oh, Continue to find a way <laughs> to get this guy the ball. And that one, that one, uh, what was that? The ball that he caught on the on the sideline where they were like, oh, that's an incomplete yeah. pass, and I guess the hurry up. That was a catch. Yeah. I don't, I heard yeah. the announcers that he was, I looked at the replay, that was a catch. He had it on the side. Yeah, he got a knee down. That was a catch. Yeah, that was a catch, yeah, you know. I mean, I just hope we don't re-sign uh, Perryman. You know, Perryman's pretty good, but I think he's just you know one trick pony straight away. You know, Mims is route running ability, and he can go deep too as well. Like he's in the middle catching it. He's all over the place. You know, and I hope we keep Crowder, but you know, we got to build around that. You know, obviously, you know, we have something in Mims. We should keep Crowder. Honestly, I think we got a left tackle. You know, we should build off those mm-hmm. things, but. You know, going forward right now, all we have to do is figure out, like, you know, how can we win one game at least? I know everybody wants to, you know, get the the draft picks, but, you know, we got to come up with a, a W at least at least by the end of the year because this is ridiculous. Like, I can't keep watching this. You know, we got six more games. Yeah. It's, it's, get, it's frustrating, you know. It's, it's frustrating. Yeah, it, it is. And you know, you know what else is frustrating? You know what, what else is frustrating, Sean? And it's great that you're bringing up that stuff. To me, what's frustrating, and, and you, you were talking about earlier, is what needs to change outside of the, the assessment, you know, in critical moments from our coaching to, to understand how to utilize certain players. It's also our penalties in these critical moments, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at the roughing the passer call on Jordan Jenkins. That was huge. That extended a drive for him. The roughing the passer call on Nathan Shepard. That was huge. That extended a drive for him. Gave him a first down and eventually gave him a score. The the penalty before the half and the pass interference on Mallette. That was huge. That extended and gave him a first down. It gave him some points as well before the half. It gave him a field goal before the half. I mean, that stuff just blows my mind. Aren't you tired of seeing us make those same mistakes in those moments? Because we always seem to come out, you know, if it's a third nine or, you know, a, a, a third and two or something like that, we need to get up, get them off the field. Don't we always make that critical mistake to give them a first down? Aren't you tired of that? I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of it. I think, honestly, these they're, they want to win. They're just thinking way too much at one point. Like, I, they just need to take – every down one by one because I th- I think honestly that's the biggest problem. They know it's third down, they play way too aggressive and then they lose themselves. Yeah. And but at the same time it's too it's consistent. You know, it's like, yeah. oh well we had a great we had a great day at practice. We had a great work ethic. They had this, they had that. But why aren't why aren't these these things that are happening in the games not being talked about in practice? It's it's yeah. happening after game after game after game. And even they said it, the announcer said, Gase is starting to run out of things to say because they keep <laughs> losing. Hmm, I wonder why. You know, after a while, you know, how many things are you going to keep telling people and your lies are going to catch up to you? You can't yeah. coach. You can't yeah. coach. It's not about these players. It's just the development of these players. You're not developing them right. You know, it's just it's just to the point where it's just you, you get tired of it. You know, it's too repetitive. Honestly. Yeah. It's, 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 this this team is, is 
ridiculous. We need a new coaching staff. That's what it comes down to, a whole new regime. Because these I, – I, I think it's the players, but it starts with the coaching, man, because these mistakes can be fixable. They're very fixable. It's just these coaches are just – you know, they go out there and, well, we suck. So, you know, we're not going to – you know, I don't really care. It doesn't matter. My, 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 my job is up for grabs anyway. It's not like I'm going to be here. And I, that's the losing mentality. You should be going out there playing like it's your first game no matter what, you know. And it, it, it's, it's just too repetitive. I'm tired of it. I'm really tired of it. Yes. I'm tired of it, too. I'm also tired of ficking. That's what I'm tired of. I mean, what are your thoughts That's on that? Enough. We have Sergio <laughs> Castillo out there. He looks great. And then we sit him for ficking. Ficking comes out there. Is missing extra points. He looks horrific. I mean, that's that's inexcusable. Why bring Ficken back if Castillo's out there hitting coach. field goals and doing well? That goes under coaching as well. Why would you pull somebody out when they're hot? He was hot. Why? You know, you know, Sickens is hurt. Why put him back in? I would have released him. I would have been like, you know what? We already released you last time. I would have released him and said, hey, we got this guy. Let's give him a shot. Why? And then you're sitting on the sidelines walking around like, oh, damn, he sucks. Well, you should have never put him in there from the beginning. You know, like, it's just why? It's the same thing like what you just said, feed the, uh, Mims the ball. If you know somebody's hot and they're doing well, feed them the ball. Why are we taking, why are we taking a, our best kicker out of the game? Why? Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. You put six and he's coming off an injury. Why? You know, it's just, it's, 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 we, we already suck, and every mistake from us is crucial. It's not like we can bounce back from this mistake. You know, if we're up, somebody gets yep. a mistake, you know that it's going to just kill the drive. It's going to kill everybody. I know when they were looking up at the score, they, that they honestly thought they had a chance to win that game. They honestly thought they had a chance to win the game after Bryce made an amazing tackle on Keenan Allen. And then it just yeah. that off dried up quick. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. It's, I mean, it's, and Gates was calling plays. Yeah. I heard, I, I think, oh, Gates ended up taking over the plays. I not really do anything. Yeah, at some point, yeah. No it's, just, it's just, it's insane, man. It's like we take five steps forward to take 50 steps back. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best you know. way. Who do you think about Sam Darnold yeah. starting next week? What do I think about Sam Darnold starting next week? Wow. Um, you know, if he's 100% and he's ready, they're going to put him out there. Um, you know, I want to see him we- go out there and be successful, but I don't know if he's going to be 100% because, you know, again, that shoulder has looked really bad for a couple weeks. And, uh, man, I just wanted to be 100%. I don't have a problem with him you going are, out there because, I mean, what are we seeing from Flacco? Flacco's making a lot of critical mistakes during games as well. Yeah. So He's a pro pro. You know, he's a pro pro. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> uh, you know it's, just, it's just sad, sad. It's sad, man, because Sam Darnold, is, I think he might be getting the boot, man, because this is – you know, oh, after a while, yeah. this league is, what can you do for me lately? You know, what have you done for me lately? Mm-hmm. And, you know, Darnold hasn't, you know, performed and he's always hurt. I mean, at the end of the day, is it is it Adam Gates' fault? Some of it. But at the end of the day, you know, the numbers don't lie. And we, you know, they need to sell tickets. So, at the end of the day, I just yeah. feel like. I, I hear you what know. you're saying, but at the same time, Darnold never had an entire receiving, his it, receiving core healthy at the same time. He never has that. Exactly. And that's, so, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good debate. That's a good debate right there because at the end of the day, it really comes down to the money. Are you going to pay him? Did he really earn that that money to yeah. re-sign him again? You know, that's, that's the expectations right there. Did, do you think – Well, you think here's that he, the deal. Okay. Go ahead. Go, I, I want to, you know, go no, ahead. If you no, want to no. talk about this, we can go. Let's go. Let's go. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so, all right, here's the deal. I already know where you're going. Let's just go ahead and go down that path because, we, you know, we'll continue to talk about the team as well. Um, I have other callers. Please be patient. You know, we'll get to everybody today. But, uh, listen, here's the deal. When you do what you've done, and everyone, I know people are going to say that I'm caping for Sam. I'm not. I'm being, this is the facts, right? This is honesty. We've never, get, we've never properly protected him. We've never truly given him weapons. And we never had a coach that has been paired with him that is worth a damn. And we've had him mm-hmm. for, what, uh, three, three, almost four, four years now or something like that, right? Because he's going into his fifth yep. year, uh, which, is, which is an option we're going to pick up. So we had him for four years. We did nothing. And I'm talking about nothing. 
The offense uh-huh. is worse personnel wise this year than it was last year. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. Right? Yep. So how can you how can you look at this team currently, right? How can you look at this uh-huh. team, stick him on this team and say, Well, if you're not successful, then it's on you. You're the one that's trash. When we've seen flashes with other coaches that were better than Gabe but weren't very good than themselves, right? Jeremy Bates, yep. that, that offense was horrific. We got rid of Todd Bowles. Why? Because he was a bad coach. And then we brought in another bad coach, one of the worst coaches, actually the worst coach in the league. Do you, like, he, here's how you know that the Jets are making critical, a critical mistake with Sam Darnold, right, and the way that we treated him. When you talk to other analysts or when, you, when, when analysts talk to other teams, right, mm-hmm. listen to how other teams talk about Sam Darnold. Listen, <laughs> like, like, like really no, listen to I, it. I, I believe the you. first I believe thing you. that I they hear, say, hear it all the time. yeah, what is the first thing they always say? It's the Jets. That's it's not the Darnold's not the problem. We haven't helped them with the <laughs> Darnold is not the problem. It's the New York Jets. Here's the problem here, and I understand why people want, you know, another quarterback or whatever, because it's about really getting that shiny new toy off them. Well, is that new quarterback going to block for himself? Is he going to catch the ball when he throws it? Because that's the issue that we have here. We have a lack of weapons and a lack of protection. If you put any quarterback in this situation, in this system, I don't give a damn if it was Lamar Jackson. They would not look good. They won't, they won't look good. That's how it works. Well, look, look, look at it like this. It's, it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. We, got a, we got a good – I think, honestly, we got a decent GM. You could say that. We got a decent GM we haven't had in a while. In now a while. with Joe Douglas, yeah. I, I think he, you know, he's proven that he can but, draft a little bit. But, again, we keep, go, yeah. keep going forward. But go ahead. But at the end of the day, he didn't draft Sam Darnold. And what I believe is Sam Darnold deserves to be on a qualified team and, a, and have a mm-hmm. good opportunity. But the way everything in the situation came about, it's only right for everybody to part ways and just start fresh because we haven't started fresh in a while with new coaches, new everything. And it's not right for Sam Darnold mm-hmm. to go into another, what is it, a third third coaching staff, you know, you know, it's just not, mm-hmm. right. you know, I rather, it's, even though I don't want to do it, it's the, it's the right thing to do because at this point it's like if Trevor Lawrence comes in, he gets a new coach, new offense, new everything, everything is new. You don't know, we can't say anything about Trevor because we don't know nothing about Trevor because he hasn't even played, but that mm-hmm. is the spotlight. You have a new coach, you have a new quarterback, you have a new start. If we get a new coach, we keep Sam Darnold, and he doesn't perform, then what? We're back to square one. That's why I just feel like we should just just let him go, let him do what he has to do, and now we can blame the coach and Trevor or whoever is going to be the quarterback or whoever is going to be the coach. <laughs> That's how I would feel like because it's just it's okay. going to be it's going to connect. If it doesn't work out, we're going to start. Our, we're everybody's going to start panicking again. Why didn't we take this? Why didn't we take Trevor? Why didn't we? You know, it's just we every. I feel like. Well, can I ask you a question? Part. Go ahead. Can I ask you a question? Can you name one right. quarterback that's been successful? And can you name one quarterback that's been successful in Adam Gaze's scheme? None. And 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 that's not. And and to be honest, you can't fault. Um, for that. You can't fault. Honestly, you can't fault Sam Darnold for that. You know, it's hard. But Sam Darnold, you know, it sucks. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done with that guy. I'm sorry. I have to laugh because right, you like none. I'm not done. Hold on one second because this is this is a great discussion. Okay, so we we've 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 established that there has not been one quarterback that's ever been successful in Adam Gaze's scheme, right? Can you name the players that once they got away from Adam Gaze or were not in Adam Gaze's scheme that flourished? Everyone. Okay. Everyone so, that has Adam team or offensive, whatever you want to call it, has been okay. well. Even, even uh, okay, the when running he was back gone, back. right? Yeah. Okay, so here's here's yep. my deal. Is I hear what you're saying, and it's, this is a great debate. I love talking to you about this. Um, here's here's the deal, is that I understand where you're coming from. I get the I get the sentiment. And I get the point. Here's the problem with, and where I think a lot of Jets fans are, I wouldn't say short-sighted, I don't want to, you know, but this is the way that I think about this. Trevor Lawrence, if we draft him, is coming into a situation where we have nothing. 
And yes, we'll get a new coach and all these other things, right? But it'd be much easier and much quicker of a rebuild if we actually trade that pick and go get a bunch of other weapons. Because if we bring in another coach, much like when Ryan Tannehill changed, uh, you know, his surroundings and went to a new coach, if we get another coach that wants to work with Sam Darnold, and again, this is all based off of our new coach, of course, does he want to work with Sam Darnold? Which I believe that Sam has the tools and the the aptitude to be successful in this league if he, if he's given the right situation and the right coach right if we get the right uh, coach in here that wants to, that wants to work with Sam Darnold and wants to you know help put him in a position to be successful i think that we can do that and we can make it work that's exactly what i think we can do because the same things that we're hearing about Sam Darnold, think about this. Literally, you can go back and read articles. I've, I've done all the research and all that stuff. The same things we're saying about Sam Darnold in this situation are the exact same things that people said about Ryan Tannehill. I'm not lying to you. Do you remember? But, Let me go through them for you real quick. Why inaccurate, bad mechanics, his mechanics were off. If you go back, they said the exact same things about Ryan Tannehill. You know what else they said about Ryan Tannehill? He got hurt quite a bit. Mm, Sam Darnold's getting hurt quite a bit, too. I wonder why. Protection, scheme, bad play calling. You want to keep uh-huh. going down the list? The exact same things that were said about Ryan Taylor Hill is a lot of the exact same things that were said about Sam Darnold. Same thing. Yeah, but look at this. Isn't it funny look, that we're hearing look, the same things about them in the same scheme for the same well, let coach? Let me break this down to you. Let me break this down. Okay, go ahead. Now, look, now go ahead. Go ahead, then. No, go ahead. I'm listening. Oh, I just, what, what I just find funny is that people are so now. quick to throw away Sam Darnold. When we know okay. that there there's bigger issues here than that. Okay, now look at this. Look at what Miami did. They got a new coach. They got a new quarterback. Is it working for them? Mm-hmm. Is it working for them? Yes. Now, well, where did he, I mean? Yeah, it, it, I mean it's worked for them go? before. Ryan Fitzpatrick was but, doing well. Yes. Well, but look at this. Where did Tannehill go? Mm-hmm. Tannehill went to a team that's qualified. He went to a good team. It worked out for both mm-hmm. parties. That's where I'm coming an agreement with is because, well, the disagreement is basically is that everybody just needs to park their ways. No, like, we're, we're it, I know <laughs> I liked him. I liked him when we got him and everything. I was excited. And, you know, it worked. And I know you could probably get the draft picks, but it's just, it's just too much like dead weight. It's too much dead weight. It's too much dead weight. I, Sam Donald really hasn't done anything to the point where we can really say Sam Donald is really great because at the end of the day, he hasn't had a comeback game before, you know, he has, he has, a, that's when, not true. He has Miami. Go back and look at the Jeremy Bates. No, he beat the bills. He had a come, he had a ton of comeback wins that year. The bills that, that year against the that bills. year in Jeremy Bates's offense uh, before Gates came here, go back and look at the, he, he had comeback the wins. Has no, he beat the Patriots? no, uh, has he beat the Patriots? He, has, but, he beat, has he beaten the Steelers? Well, he I, beat the Steelers. With can no I ask you a question? He he, he beat the no. Cowboys before, but can I ask you a question? What have we had? What have we put around him that would even qualify him to beat those teams? All those teams we that you're Rob, naming we are have Robbie. Robbie was top five wide receiver. He when we had Robbie Anderson, we were still wondering if he was even a, a good enough to be a, a solid number two wide receiver. We've <laughs> never had a number one here. No. Are you serious? You thought that Robbie Anderson was elite number one when he was here? Go yeah, look at the production. Had, we, the production we, we was had, not here. We had, we had Robbie and we had Crowder, you know, and he still couldn't really win our, us games. At the end of the day, look what look what Joe Burrow is doing. Unfortunately, you, he got hurt. Look, you look had, you had Robbie and you had Crowder with no protection and no other weapons. We also had Le'Veon Bell, who was not being utilized correctly. That's why Robbie is doing so well where he is. He's being utilized correctly. When Robbie was here, he was a go route receiver, and that was it. That was it. Yeah, but also, go back and look at the production. Also, You're talking about we have Robbie. But, go back and look at the production. He never had a thousand yard season here. At all. Yeah, that's true. But when but so Sam what is that, so, so how are, how are we supposed to that, so how is Sam supposed to succeed when we have these players that are not being utilized correctly? And then we also have a lack of talent everywhere else, and the O-line was horrific. I'm not caping for him, right? But I'm also not Mm -hmm. looking at the situation and going, well, Sam should have carried us, and we should beat teams like the Ravens and all these other teams. We're not talented enough to do that, and our coaches aren't talented mentally enough to beat the Ravens. 
How many times? Not, okay, go back and look at that Patriots. Here's here's a great example, right? What you talked about, you're bringing up a lot of really good points. You remember when we played the Patriots and they brought the same zero blitz all game? I'm talking all game. And he, they were bringing yeah, that blitz was, in, at 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 midfield. You remember that? And that was like that's mm-hmm. not a blitz that you're supposed to be bringing midfield. They did that all game. Do you remember what the talk was after that game? The talk was Adam Gaze is so idiotic. You can run the exact same play 50 times against him, and he doesn't know how to stop it. Do you remember that yeah, Belichick was uh, laughing? He was laughing on the sidelines at us. He was literally laughing because we were so stupid, we couldn't stop anything that he was doing. You remember that? That was the game where they were saying, hey, that, that was the IC Ghost game because he wasn't getting protected correctly. Because he was getting beat around, picked up, and slammed by the Patriots defense. So that that's what I'm saying. It's like, okay, if we're if we're saying that we're gonna move on from Sam, if you want to do that, okay, fine. But be real and be honest about why you want to do it. You want to do it because you want to move on, you want to get Trevor, you want to start this. But don't say it's because well Sam Sam is he's not really doing Sam anything. He's not he's not because you haven't Sam, put him in Sam a position Donald's to do so. Sam Donald's a Go turnover ahead. machine. He, Sam Donald's a turnover machine. Mm-hmm. He, he can't read fast. If you see what Flacco's doing, he can get the ball out quick. Sam Donald can't get the ball out quick. Yes, we have a terrible line, but Sam has to get the, the ball out quicker. He's been doing the same repetitive thing since he started here. He's in, he's in year three. People are going to so. get tired of him still doing the same thing. I understand he's hurt and he doesn't have things, but you've got to still work with what you got. Look at Flacco. Flacco had a QBR last week, what was like 123 or something like that. Sam Donald hasn't had a QBR like that all year. Flacco Sam also Donald has his had... offensive weapons. He also has his offensive well, weapons that, healthy. But, but think about Sam it, never had that. Donald, but look at this. Has Sam Donald ever been consistent? Has Sam Donald ever been consistent even when he had everybody on the field? Le'Veon Bell, everybody, just from all his three years, has he ever been consistent? That's has the he ever that had the never... talent to be consistent? Has he ever had the talent to be consistent? When you say these things, you have to use the context of, okay, it's not like he's just out there by himself. You, we literally have the worst O-line in the league three years out of the – honestly, four years yeah, out of the, the time he's like, played here. We've it's, had it's, the worst O-line in the – do you remember the O-line the year before Gaze got here? And the year – the first year that Gaze got here? The worst okay, O-line okay. in the Listen league. Okay, okay. Okay, it was so this. easy let's, to get to Sam. It was ridiculous. We got okay, beat by a Miami three-man front in the first year of Adam Gaze's uh, time here. Do you remember that? Do you remember we got yeah. beat by the Bengals who were like, oh, I think, were they 0-11 when we played them? We, play? we Sam were Donald, the first correct? team in NFL history to get beat by two teams that were more than 0-7. And Sam Donald Go back and watch and those dark. games. That off- yeah, and that offensive line was letting guys completely blast him. That's why we went and got Makai Becton. That's why even coming yeah. into this season, we were still saying, hey, we need more guys because this offensive but, line but is the horrific. Ravens, how, about the, how about the Ravens? The Ravens are having a hard time right now because what did, what did Lamar say? Oh, the teams are knowing what we're doing. It's called the NFL. That's the problem why they always blitz us when Sam Donald's is because he can't read. He does not know how to read a blitz. He can't shift the line, and he doesn't get the ball out quick enough. I understand what you're saying, and we don't have nobody, but also it's Sam Donald not getting the ball out. You've seen when he was in there when he was trying to throw the ball to Denzel Mims against the Bills. He was open, and he wanted to start running all over the place. Sometimes he doesn't need to run. He needs to just stay in the pocket and throw the ball. He needs to see his first read and go. And it's obvious you see it. But at the end of the day, it does trickle down from our GM, our coaching, and then down to Sam. But I've seen a lot of games where there's a lot of people open, and Sam just can't get the ball because he sees it too late. And that's a big problem. I'll tell you what. I've seen more games where Sam is running for his life and there are guys barreling down on him, and he's trying to get out of there. If you look at our look at our scores this year, most of our scores this year is Sam getting outside of the pocket and making a play with his feet because and there's no at, there's no at, nothing. Before Sam went down, that was okay. most of our offensive scores because the offensive line was playing horrifically. I mean, outside of Beckton, who was who was who was solid but, and decent at times, but, but the rest of the line was but, playing terrible, particularly the right side and, and the at, interior was letting up left and right. 
and, and look what Joe Burrow has. Joe Burrow doesn't have anything, and he's still throwing for 300 passes. At, like I said, you got to be kidding correct. me. Do you, you made, do you watch the Bengals? Look, look at this. Do you watch the, are you telling me that look Joe Burrow has nothing? Joe Burrow has T. Higgins. He has A.J. Green. He has Tyler Boyd. He also has Joe Mixon. Ta- t- listen, Joe Burrow is not on the greatest of greatest teams, but Joe Burrow is not on a team that is built like the New York Jets. People say that, and they I, really don't watch the Bengals. Like, let me tell you something. Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow's a, a very solid quarterback, and I heard he, you know, dealt, is dealing with an injury right now. I wish him the best. I hope he comes back soon. But let me tell you something. Uh, he's not on some, you know, just – he's not on a team that's as bad as the New York Jets. Not happening. And his coach is way better. If you look at – when you talk about that, young quarterbacks, the guys that you're talking about right now – Herbert, we talked about Herbert, we talked about Burrow, we talked about all these young quarterbacks, and we, and we say, well, they're more successful than Sam. Why are they? Look at the situations that they're in. I feel, look at the situation. Like look, look at the talent. Not only look at the talent, but look at the coaching. Joe Burrow's coach is better than ours, by far. I'm talking light years. Yeah. It's not even close. So how are we sitting here? How are we sitting here blaming Sam when he literally doesn't have an online, when he was playing – his weapons, none of them were healthy at the same time. Our wide receiver core was not healthy at all. So we, we don't give him adequate weapons. We don't protect him adequately. And then we give him the worst head coach in all of football. And we say, well, you haven't shown us enough. You're not successful. It's the same okay. things that I heard so, about Ryan Tannehill, the same stuff. It's the, okay. it's the same okay. stuff. And when he went he somewhere with, with decent coaching and a system that was adequately set up, guess what? He has one of the highest passer ratings. What is, I think he's like all right, fourth all like time. Let's, let's say it Go like ahead. this. He's playing, if he's healthy, if he's healthy next week and he's playing Miami and he's playing, he has Perryman, Denzel, and he has Crowder and he has Herndon, even though Herndon, you know, is a little iffy. But, you know. I know you. <laughs> he can just say he can't Go, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, you know, he's a little so iffy. I know you. If he can't perform. If he cannot yeah. perform, there's going to be questions. There's going to be questions. Yeah. It, even though Adam Gase can't coach, it's still – Adam Gase is not playing for Sam Donald. Sam Donald's playing for himself. He still has to make the plays himself. So, at the end of the day, if he can't – Do you know that he's not allowed to audible? You know that? You know he's well, not he allowed to, to audible? Do uh, <laughs> you know that? Do you know that he is not allowed to audible? Do you know that we found that out this year? He has to come to the line, and he's even if he sees that a play is not going to work, he just has to run he it. He is not allowed he to audible. When we played Indian, remember when we played the Colts? Did he? Did Sam Donald? Did not? Didn't he turn the ball over in an end zone? Yeah. And a crucial, and crucial you. point of the game. Didn't Sam Donald throw the ball into the end zone? And he, and he uh, it was an interception. He's a turnover machine. Listen. Every time we get a little, okay. he's a turnover machine. We'll see. Like I said, we'll see. Miami. When we play Miami, Miami has a good defense. We'll see. He has everybody playing healthy. We'll see. I'm going to see if we're going to call come, back. Okay. We're going to have another debate about this. I want to see this. I want to, I want to hear this. <laughs> this time. If he fails, it's over. It's quiet. Bro. Listen, quiet. Sean, he's, he, he's, going to be come, he's going to be coming off an injury. We're going to see him. We're going to see, you know, what he does. But you can't, you can't just come in blasting Sam because of these things. Again, I'm not the no, biggest – I'm not a huge it. Sam I defender. Believe- I'm just saying, come on, you got you gotta you gotta call a spade a spade. You well, cannot blame this kid good. for everything that's going on. It's that's that's just that's not right. And I mean it's not like Joe Flacco was playing much better when he first started. I remember him coming out, he looked hella ridiculous in his first game. It was a lot of turnovers, two interception, the twenty eight yard sack that he took, stuff like that. It was in the same scheme with the same issues. Yeah, we but saw we it. At it. That's why I said we gotta look at it like this too. Joe Douglas did not draft Sam Donald. That's why Sam Donald is in a in a point where you really can't – he's in a situation where you really can't be mad about it because Joe Douglas is the new GM. He drafted Makai Beckham, Denzel, Denzel Mims, all these – he's not looking at Sam Donald like, well, you know, Sam Donald's a qualified quarterback, but if you're the new GM, you don't want no parts of that. You want your own – That's not what he regime. said, though. That's huh? not what he said. He literally well, said that he, one of the big reasons for him to come here was because he wanted to work with Sam Darnold. That was one of the biggest yeah, draws for him to come here. We can't believe he everything. He didn't say that. <laughs> we can't believe, especially coming from the death organization, we can't believe nothing that's going on. You know? 
All right. Well, <laughs> listen, listen. So first off, I want to thank you for calling in. I, you know, I love talking to you. I love debating. Listen, yeah. it's going to be all year round. You already know when the off season comes, we're going to have to talk, yeah. bro, because you already know how I'm feeling <laughs> about how I want to build this team. You know what I'm saying? But, again, listen, I got to get back to the rest of these callers. I want to thank you for calling in, my man. You have a good night. All right. You too, man. All right. Peace. Woo, listen, Sean calling in. Listen, I, I tell people all the time, I'll give you time. I'll give you time. You know what I mean? I love debating. I love arguing. We can go back and forth. And I already know that people are going to be coming. You know what I'm saying? This this off team ain't going to be coming for me. I already know that. I will argue with y'all. I will debate with y'all. Keep the debate respectful. We can go back and forth. Don't call into my show cursing because I will get you out of here fast as possible. Okay? As fast as possible. All right? We're gonna get to the uh we're gonna get back to the callers. Nine eight four, I'm gonna come to you when I get back to the callers in one second. I think that's my dude from uh North Carolina. We definitely gonna chop it up. Uh but I gotta get to the savages in the chat. If this is your first time listening to me on Blog Talk Radio, yes, I do live stream while I do my radio show, okay? I'm not just live on Blog Talk, I also do a live video stream as well. On Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube again, Long Beach Joe Jets. I got a lot of questions about where I'm streaming at. I thought I already told y'all, but it's Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. All right. We live stream on there. You can come in there and talk to me in the chat, or you can call in as well. The number is 515-602-9639. Again, 515-602-9639. Today we are talking about this Chargers or the loss to the Chargers, excuse me, but you know, people want to talk to me about the future of the Jets all the time. And I love going back and forth with folks. So if you tempt me, (laughs) I will uh, debate with you. Absolutely. But to go to the savages in the chat right now, Aaron Valle in the chat. Yo, salute to you, Aaron. You know what I'm saying? Salute to you. Welcome to the stream, my man. Aaron says he can't get, he can't get the ball out quick because the damn old line is horrible. <laughs> I try to tell people. You know what I'm saying? I try to tell people. <laughs> you know, I'm not a caper for, for you know, for, for Sam Darnold. I, you know, I know he has his faults, but it's like, come on, bro. Come on. How can you blame the guy when you got guys barreling down on him? Like, come on now. Jet Black says, last season, Sam beat the Cowboys, Raiders, and Redskins in a row. Yeah. And I remember after that Cowboys game, you know, people were heated. You know, people were pretty heated, especially the Cowboys fans. They were they were pretty mad. You know what I mean? And we were hot. Sam was looking great. You know what I mean? Sam was looking real good. Yo, Kervin Ledger, salute to you. Welcome to the stream as well, my friend. <laughs> like, Kevin Lurger says, so what? If you see the play isn't going to work, you should be able to change the play. That's a fact. You should be able to audible. But Sam is not. <laughs> Sam is not. I completely agree with you there, Kervin. So salute to you. Uh, so we're going to get back to these callers again. My guys in the chat, my savages, y'all, I call them the savages because, you know, they're savage. Everybody gets after it. You know what I mean? Nobody is safe uh, here in East Street. So <laughs> we get after people. But I'm going to go back to the callers. Go to my guy in North Carolina. How are you feeling, my friend, after watching the Jets lose to the Chargers 28-34? Yeah, it's tough. How you doing, Joe? I'm all right. How are you? Oh, hanging in there. Finally get a chance to get a little bit of rest and uh, get to check out my New York Jets. And uh, I think all we have to go on is um, be in full tank mode, so... The expectations, I think, at this point can't be too high. I think the best we can hope for is just that our draft picks perform well. And hopefully Joe Douglas is doing his diligence and is uh, week-to-week evaluating some of the players we have on the roster. And I think you yeah. probably already know or have a good idea who they're going to keep and who's going to be gone. I think, you know, they privately to that knowledge on the inside, you know, more than us. We can only speculate. But they probably already know who they're going to keep and who they're going to let go. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they have a an idea, uh, like you said as well. And I want to thank you for calling in. You know, I always love talking to you. Oh yeah. Uh, but what bothers me the most, and, and it's great that you bring up evaluating talent, uh, evaluating young talent as well. What bothers me is we're still seeing guys that should have the ball put in their hands, you know, kind of get excluded out of the game plan or not get enough, not get as much as others should have. And I go straight to the running back position, and I say to myself. Why is it, again, that we're seeing Frank Gore get more carries, get more opportunities as well in the passing game than we see uh, P. Ryan get? And it's just mind-boggling to me because Gore is almost a 40-year-old running back. I mean, isn't that ridiculous to you as well? (laughs) 
It is. It is. It is very ridiculous to me. I mean, only the Jets. This is the time where you're supposed to see the young ones with the veterans like Gore, who's well-respected, falling back and just stand next to him and talk to him, you know, and console the young man, you know, in his rookie mm-hmm. season and help give him guidance. That's, that's what you need of Frank Gore. That's where his value comes late in his career. It's not as a player anymore. He's not the same player he was in his early years with San Francisco. We know he was one of the better backs in the league when he was in his prime. Now this is a stage where we need him to be, uh, uh, you know, to help consult the younger player, just like um, our quarterback. You know, we need to help consult James Morgan and, and help, you know, help him develop. That's the key. Yeah. That's where the value comes in for these veteran, uh, older veteran players. You know, I'm curious about that as well. Why don't we see uh, Michael P. Ryan? Why don't we see James Morgan? I would like to see just what, how James Morgan would react in his rookie year. Mm-hmm. They say he's very smart, very savvy, and I think the Jets justified that pick based on from the neck up with Morgan. They say he's very, very smart and a uh, very savvy young man for his age. I'm wondering what's going on in, on the inside and why aren't they um, letting him play? I don't know whether – they have a lot of confidence in this offensive line, which is obviously still not up to the standard it has been in the past, but uh, that may be a factor. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I uh, everything that we're hearing about Morgan, you know, everything from Gay said, I, I just I don't understand why we haven't seen him yet either. Um, I'm a little yeah. kind of befuddled, especially when you just took this guy in this draft, and we talked about it going in. That was one of the questionable picks that everybody was saying was that, you know, why would you take yeah. a quarterback when we need wide receivers out of the yin yang? Like, what's the deal? Here? I never agreed. Maybe I never we... agreed with taking James Morgan where we took it. No, mm-hmm. I never agreed with taking a quarterback. You use that yeah. pick yeah. to add, add wide receivers, add offensive linemen. Maybe you might strike gold on one of the edge rushers. That's where the value yeah. comes in. Taking a quarterback doesn't make sense. Only way you draft a quarterback. <laughs> where we took him or maybe second, third round, unless you're looking for someone who projects maybe the next year or so to replace Sam Donald. That's the only, that's yeah. the only uh, justification I see for that, you know. Otherwise, you don't take yeah. a quarterback. Yeah, and, and that, that was, that know, was a I big don't... question there was like, it, and, and not just him. I remember some people were questioning the uh, Zuniga pick as well. They were saying, hey, this kid Zuniga, uh, we could have had a wide receiver there as well, but it kind of is what it is. But I, I remember a lot of people wondering there. But I look at the situation where at some point I think we will probably see him. I don't understand why we haven't seen him yet. I don't understand why yeah. he isn't, you know, QB number two or being out there. But, you know, it kind of is yeah. what it is. But continuing on with yeah. these guys that we currently have on the roster as well, young players that are really putting on and doing their thing, I want to get your thoughts on Mims, man, because I felt like in this game there should have been – I know he had some targets, but there should have been more of an effort to really get the football in his hands and not just, you know, some stuff up the sidelines, but also moving him around, yeah. getting him into the middle of the field too. I mean, what are your thoughts about the way he was handled and just some of the play calls that were kind of targeted towards him? They did a little bit. They could have did more. Mims is a stud. I think when he, I think last time we talked, I mentioned uh, Brett Coleman, YouTuber Brett Coleman. He did an analysis on him, Mm -hmm. and that kind of put him on the map for me. I said, let me see what his analysis is going to be on this guy, Denzel Mims. I didn't know anything about him, but I know he pumped him up, and he had some good film study, and I said, whoa. (laughs) I said, wow. So the traits he was showing in some of the film breakdown is that he was able to get off the jam and use his hands. It was very impressive. And then his, you know, his, his ball skill and just able to use that long, lanky frame was just yeah. outstanding. Body control, his hands, everything. He was like the whole pack. Usually wide receivers that are young like that, they may need a little mm-hmm. bit of strength. Maybe they don't get off the jam as well. Maybe at the college level, you know, they get more liberty, more free release. And, you know, then they come to the pro, you know, DB is going to be much more aggressive and stronger. But Mim showed the traits in earlier film study that he was strong enough and had good technique <laughs> to actually swap that, you know, swat away the jam and, and come off and, and swim over and use his hands and able to beat, beat a decent jam. And I said, when I saw those traits and maybe the release from the line and beat the jam, I said, whoa, that's what I'm looking for in a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. You know, tall frame. He's able to get off the line of scrimmage. It's not too difficult with some young players who are, you know, leave a little more developmental might struggle, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like our past draft pick, I'm yeah. trying to think of that. You know what I'm talking about. He was a bust. He was a long, lanky frame guy, too, but he's nothing like Mims. Stephen Hill. Real deal. 
Stephen Hill. You're talking right. about Stephen Hill. That's, That's a fact. Stephen Hill had <laughs> you know, horrible. Stephen Hill had many of the same measurements. That Mims does, but he's 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 nothing like so Mims. Mims is it, Mims nothing is the like total him. package, the total package. <laughs> he can actually run routes, get off the jam. He catches the ball cleanly. He does everything you want. And you know this is just his rookie year, his first introduction into the league. You wait till next year, Woo. if we can add another oh wide boy. out to compliment him. And get some of the coverage. Mm-hmm. The best coverage right now is on Mim. Everybody jumping on Mim. You wait till we get another wide out to compliment him. We get a like yeah. a, what's that cat name in college? Brashard. We get a one of those wide out. Maybe a Jamar Chase. Do you imagine? Yeah, I was about to say Jamar Chase. Like? People are already talking about him. Whew. But you know Jamar yeah. Chase. Uh, he's been on my radar for a while. But you know that number one pick. It's a shame that we had to use that top pick on a quarterback. Because if we didn't, mm-hmm. I mean, we had so many options, man. So many oh. options, and I'm just. Um, I like how you I'm slid that in there. It's by, a shame we got to use that on you know? the quarterback. Yeah, it's a shame. I like how you slid that in there. It's been in the back of there. my mind for months, and I'll be I'll be going over all the scenario. What if, you know, what if we didn't have to take a quarterback? I mean, the possibilities are endless. But we do we have to take a quarterback? Do we have to take a quarterback? Do we? I, Keep in my real. opinion, do we no. have to take a quarterback? Because no. I like how you slid that in there. No, you know what I'm saying? in my, you in my that opinion, in there. even though Donald okay. has his flaws, no. But what it is okay. in in the Jets organization's mind, because of that rookie salary cap, that could be one of the factors that come down to dollars and cents. I think in their mind, they want to reset that rookie cap. That's Can why they're the cutting Donald loose. Yeah. Okay, can I ask you a question, though? Sure. I hear what you're saying about that rookie cap, and I hear what you're saying about yeah, salary cap. Yeah. One question. Who exactly yeah. are we paying? Who are we paying big money to on this football team? No one. Nobody. With Jamal <laughs> Adams gone, he was, he was the biggest yeah. thing looming over us of what to do with Jamal now that he's gone. I told Nobody, you. really. <laughs> Nobody, yeah. really. So why, and we have plenty so of salary cap you? flexibility. Yeah. So why can't we, right? Honestly, we're going into yeah. a fifth year option with Sam. Why can't we pick up that fifth year option, get trade down, get more weapons, and better this football team as a whole? Why can't we do that? Yeah. Yeah. Because can That's I actually, right. can I actually okay, if you look at and you look at you get every time, you and Sean, every time y'all me, y'all get me <laughs> to start talking about every time. I'm just gonna go. Oh yeah. So if we're if we're talking about that, right? We're talking about better than this football team. Right, it's probably just what the only guys that's gonna be that's gonna be making money because Bell, well, I don't, whatever is going on with his contract, Jamal Adams is yeah, gone. Yeah. Mosley is probably the only guy that's gonna be making like some real money. I, I don't know how much money he's yeah. making. I remember at one point he was making like eighteen so million. So some of the cats like that, that you mentioned, but, what what are the residuals as far as money owed? Do we owe any of them any anything? Le'Veon Bell, I know we don't owe Jamal, but we dealt dealt Jamal. Yeah, we don't owe anything. we don't owe Jamal. Le'Veon, I think there's a yeah. little bit uh, for Le'Veon because uh, we still owe uh-huh. some of it. And then the other guy that he signed or the other team that he signs with kind of you know picks up whatever he makes with them. But we still owe some okay. of that. But even then, we still have almost I want to say we have close to a hundred million dollars. Uh, wow. in, um, in, in, in money. So like most, mm. most of these players that we have too are on one year deals. Perry Mills on a one year deal. Pierre Desir is on a one year deal. Jordan Jenkins on a one year yeah. deal. Yeah. So a lot of these guys that are here are not going to be here in the future. Anyway, we don't have really anybody to play outside, mm-hmm. excuse me, of Mosley. Mosley is going to be playing question. a solid, solid amount of money. But, but one second yeah. before we get to that, yeah. uh, the, the thing that you're talking about is, is, and, and you touched on it is, you know, you look at this situation where our options trading down are so vast, I don't think you can pass that up. Do we really have to draft a quarterback in number one? No, we don't. Because look at the problems on this football team. I'm a, yeah, I'm, I, yeah. I try, to, try to bring it to everybody, and I constantly say this, is that the problems with this team is we are bad at impact positions. We, we don't yeah. have enough players in impact positions at all, right? We don't have enough don't. good old linemen. Our cor- we're going to have to revamp our cornerback position. I don't know if people know that yet, but that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to revamp the cornerback position. It could even get even mm. uglier if Marcus May walks away, right? Because then we'll need a mm. free safety. Ashton Davis is going to be here. Of course, you're getting rid of uh, Brantley McDougal because and, and, he's trash. Yeah, yeah. So we can move on from him. Yeah. 
We still don't have a pass rusher. You just talked about it as well. We're still looking for maybe a number one wide receiver. Maybe Mims turns into that. We're all we're looking at him right now. Kid yeah. looks credible. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't oh, want to yeah, go too yeah. far. But the kid looks credible. Like he, he looks. Does. He does. He looks really good. Maybe he's a, he a high end number two. Maybe he's a number one. Whatever. But we'll still need uh, wide receivers. We have so many. Vast needs. I didn't even talk about the offensive line, right? All these guys yeah, in the interior right. are pretty much trash, and Fant is garbaggio. We need to move on from him as well. So with all of those needs on this football team, why would you pass up the opportunity to possibly get two, if not more, first-round picks, maybe three? And this is what analysts are telling me. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you what analysts mm-hmm. are telling you. You can get two, maybe three first-round picks, a couple yeah. second-round picks, and mm-hmm. you know get a bunch of other mid-round picks. You can pair those. And not just pick up talent, you can also trade down and continue to gain capital where you make your capital, make you even more capital, and you can fill oh, yeah, those spots right. in. Why would you just right. do that and attack and make your football team better as a whole? Even if Sam Darnold isn't the guy and you figure that out in the fifth year option, guess what? You can just go get another quarterback that you can plug in that's going to be a guy that's going to be a game manager because that's how we've won it in the past. The best That's offense right. we've ever had statistically was quarterback by Ryan Fitzpatrick. I bring that up because I'm trying to show y'all mm. that you don't have to be like a miracle worker if at quarterback if you have a vast amount of weapons. You can be successful. Yeah. You can't be horrific. You can't be terrible. But you, you can be a guy that, hey, I'm going to make sure that we're in the game. I'm not going to make the big mistake to cost us. But I'm not That's right. Aaron Rodgers. That's right. I'm not Tom Brady. Yeah. You can still win That's in this right. league with those type of guys. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you, ask you something. I want to go, go into this even deeper. I'm going to throw something out there to you. Do you watch a lot of college football? Because I don't watch a lot of it. I, I really get into it when it comes down to the draft and, and studying mm-hmm. on that side. Yeah. Are you how much, yeah. how deep are you into college football? What are the quarterback projections for 2022? Now, I know that's a hard, hard one. That's kind of Oh, that's yeah. Of early, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the but that's that uh, may watch it on Are we talking quarterback or cornerback? Maybe a junior, yeah. Because I'm thinking, like, let's yeah. say we don't draft a quarterback somehow by a miracle when that mm-hmm. pick is announced that it is not a quarterback, and let's say they trade that yeah. pick and do like you're proposing, what I think maybe they should do as a possible option as well. 2022. Mm-hmm. They will have the necessary ammunition. They will have three, three ones, probably a two, maybe extra three as well. They will have Boy. the necessary picks to move up in that, that one year and get their guy without giving up any That's future picks. That's a fact. Well, the, the, the thing that's tough, and I do watch uh, quite a bit of college, uh, a little bit of college football here and there. Um, I try to stay on top of it, but, you know, covering the show, covering the Jets, so on and so forth, it's really tough. Yeah, but I try yeah, to watch yeah. as many kind of games yeah, I know. as possible. You know that yeah. I'm a Trojan. You know what I'm saying? I, you know that I, we wave that USC flag over here, Southern Cal, oh, California. You know, uh-huh. That university is the greatest of all time. I'm just putting that out there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the end That's of the right. day, you know what I'm saying? Fight on, fight on. But at the end of the day, um, the the problem is to try to, you know, talk about the projection in 2022 is really tough because, again, quarterbacks there, you know, can have a good season, can have a bad season, there's injuries that can happen, all types of things. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. We'll kind of see when that, when that happens. But the point is that, like you said, and that was the point of my take, is that we'll be there. So whatever the top oh, yeah. guy is, or hell, not even a top guy, maybe, you know, we've done this in the past. Maybe there's a veteran quarterback that kind of falls out that still has some gas That's in the right. tank that can still maybe give us, like a Ryan Tannehill, you know what I'm saying, that can still right. give us you know, three, four years or something like that, and we can move forward with him while we bring in a young quarterback to maybe mentor and tutor. So there's so many different moving parts in there. That's why, again, I'm a huge proponent of trading down because I don't want to spend the next four years trying to rebuild this team again. That's a 10-year rebuild. Me either, me either. That's That's why I've been taking a second look at the other other second-tier quarterbacks, the Tanner Morgan from Minnesota under my guy, Mm -hmm. T.J. Fleck. So I've been kind of looking at him for the last several months as a consolation prize. What if we trade that first pick, maybe with that second yeah. pick? Who knows? Maybe take a T. Uh, maybe take a uh, James. Uh, James Morgan. And he looks very good. Yep. Tremendous ball fake. Uh, seems to have a lot of good instincts for the position. And uh, that's another possibility. See that way we can, can still get a guy that we can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. 
Yeah, I was starting to say uh, a guy that maybe we can still develop while we slowly build the team, add offensive line help, get ourselves some more wide receiver because we will be in a transitional year next year, you know, with a new head coach and he's going to bring yeah. in his own assistant. So it's going to be a long road for us, man. Long yeah. process. And can, can I, but the big thing is, yeah, it is, yeah. and you know, yeah, you know, you know what else, and you're bringing up a great point. But I want to throw something else out there. Yeah. Uh, those picks that we're talking about, you know, we don't just have to draft guys, uh, you know, because, again, we have quite a bit of cap money. We also know that we're, we have an issue attracting free agents here. We've had that for yeah, years. That's true. Like, you know, oh, yeah. even when yeah. we get guys here, we've got to pay the Jets tax, right? Are we all tired yeah. of that? Like, <laughs> over, we right. overpaid for Le'Veon you know, Bell. He would have never come here if we didn't pay him that much. We overpaid for Mosley. He would have never paid if we didn't come here that much. So yeah. what we yeah. could do if we have a draft pick or if we have – extra picks and stuff like that, guess what can happen? We can trade for players. There's so many players oh, yeah, that are yeah, out there yeah. that t- talk about every year, right? You want to better your wide receiver core fast? Maybe Allen Robinson. You can get in a couple picks or a pick or two. You can get him. Bring him to the squad. OBJ is talking right. about. You know, there's so many guys That's that are right. constantly That's on right. that trade market that teams are mm-hmm. willing to take. Hell, look. Okay, look at the Cardinals. Look at what the Cardinals did. The Cardinals got a call. They called uh, the Texans and said, hey, what do you want for DeAndre Hopkins? Oh, second round pick? No problem. Here you That's go. Right. And look what they've done. They literally got the mm-hmm. best wide receiver, I consider him the best wide receiver in the league, you know, for right. a second round pick. And their young quarterback is flourishing with him now. You just chuck mm-hmm. it up there, he'll, he'll See, catch it, Buffalo, whatever. Buffalo, you know what I'm saying? So that, Buffalo that's, that's Bills. The kind of, Oh yeah, the Bills. They, go ahead. they go are ahead. the, the prototype for how to how to do it and do it right. They did everything yes, we were supposed to do. They went on, got a right head Fact. coach, stopped BSing around and letting everybody Fact. coach their team. They went on and got a good guy. They did their due diligence. They did their research and hired a good coach, somebody that yeah. people can respect and held in high esteem. And then they went on and developed Josh Allen. They probably have a good quarterback coach too to work with him, mm-hmm. you know, clean up his mechanics. Because when he came out of college, you were concerned, you know, about his accuracy. Everyone knew he was Absolutely. a freak. You freak physically. He reminded me of Big Ben. But he might be a little yes. more athletic than even Big Ben was in his prime. You know, Josh Allen's a yep. thoroughbred, thoroughbred, like a big horse out there running. You can't get him down. People bouncing off him. You know, he, he's the real deal. And they cleaned up his mechanics. Now they got him setting himself making the you know the proper throw, his mechanics are cleaner, so now he's not, you know, making those errant throws like he was last year. All of a sudden he's hitting those throws. And I've been telling people yeah. if he start hitting some of those throws, man, you will not be able to stop Josh Allen. He will be hard to stop, yeah. man. Yeah. But you know what else you know? they did too? They 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 invested greatly in the offensive side of the ball for him. They bettered yeah. their offensive yeah. line. He's not running for his life. Yeah. I mean he does run when he feels like it, but he's not running for oh, his yeah. life. And like you said as well, a big part of them investing in him while and they did and like you said, they're the prototype of what we should be doing because they did it when he was on his rookie year deal yeah. when he was cheap. Yeah. They brought in Stefan yeah. Diggs because last year what they had yeah. they had a uh the, those those two wide receivers um, you know, that, that were that were solid, but they weren't gonna kill you. They weren't number ones. So they went out, they got yeah. themselves number ones and or got got themselves a certified number one and now they're moving things and they're mm-hmm. making things happen. So yeah, we, we see should, what it we is when, their the, when Buffalo acquired them. digs. When Buffalo acquired digs, that remind me of the Jets back in two thousand nine, two thousand ten when they made the moves to try to put themselves on yep. the next, the next level. When we acquired San Antonio yep. Holmes, you remember Edward. that? Yep. It was reminding me yep. what Buffalo did. That. They went to their team, was in contention where they could make a fierce run. They said, why not? Go and give up the high pick. Mm-hmm. You know, it's worth it. Go and bring a, a, yeah. a Stephon Diggs, a number one caliber wide receiver. That's the finishing touch, and that's exactly what they did. That's exactly yeah. what yeah. they and, did. Yeah, they like did everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, salute to Ledger in the chat. He's John Beasley and Cole Brown. That's exactly what you yeah. – yeah, those are two guys I was talking about That's in Buffalo. Right. And I remember they chopped us up uh, one year, completely carved us oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, But we yeah. were like, oh, they don't really have a number one. They can't really get over the head. They went to the playoffs. And they just couldn't figure things out, and they went and got the guy to, to really detonate. But I got to get to these That's callers. Right. Listen, man, I want to thank That's you for right, calling buddy. in. Please call in the next yeah. time I have a show. You know I'm, I'm doing shows year-round. We're going to free agency. Yeah. We're going into the draft. We're definitely going to talk, and I cannot wait to have those discussions with you, man. Yeah, I can't wait on my end as well. You take care, buddy. All right, you have a good one. Peace. And you too, Dan. Whew, what a phenomenal call. Phenomenal call. Um, man, my guy from North Carolina, he calls in, and, you know, we talk about the team, and I understand it's tough because this team sucks. <laughs> 
We're all in ten. This team sucks, man. It sucks. It sucks to talk about the season. I try to talk about the season with everybody. I try to cover our wins. Oh, well, there is no wins. I try to cover our losses. <laughs> I try to cover our losses. You know what I'm saying? And, and talk about you know what we can take away from the game. But I know people also want to talk about the offseason. So you know, I'll, you know, I'll go back and forth with you. I want to get your thoughts, but uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to the callers in just a second. Eight one three. When I come back, you're gonna be on. Uh, I'm going to go to the, my guys, my savages in the chat. Salute to y'all. Salute to Kervin Ledger. Salute to you. Uh, you know, salute to Jerry Johnson. Uh, that's, it's good to see you in here my, as well, my friend. Um, you know, so uh, Marcus Stokes in the chat. Salute to Marcus. Marcus says, uh, we play like we enjoy losing. <laughs> Marcus coming out of the gate with the fire. You know what I'm saying? Marcus coming out of the gate with the fire, man. Coming out the gate with the fire. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, man. Savages in the chat. Salute to Marcus Stokes and everybody commenting. We're going to keep things rolling. We're going to get back to these callers. <laughs> Nobody's safe. I tell everybody, nobody is safe around here, all right? <laughs> so, 813, I'm coming to you. I want to get your thoughts on the uh, the Jets losing to the Chargers today. How are you feeling about uh, the play of Denzel Mims in this loss? I mean, it. Uh, pretty bad so you know I was just thinking about uh, maybe you know I don't know I just started watching this show you know not too long ago and uh, I Mm -hmm. came across the channel uh, from a buddy of mine and uh, you know I love the Jet I I love the New York team but you know they are something else like uh, your comments are said you know I think you guys are just like to lose and I mean, I hope more in the future that they can get their stuff together and, you know, get the team together to do what they got to do. But I'll tell you one thing that ain't going to happen, Long Beach Joe. I'll tell you this right now. Guess what? They might lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that's me calling on the 813 line because the Buccaneers got Tom Brady. And they're doing (laughs) – that's all about they got. And Scotty Miller and uh, Rob Kanowski. But other than that, it, well, sir, you might get a win on that one. I might tell you. I'll tell you that for damn sure because uh, <laughs> we, we ain't too we ain't doing too shabby ourselves. Well, you know, I mean, first we're off, doing I all right. Say, we're yeah. doing all right, but we're <laughs> doing as good as we were, you know. But the yeah. jet, yeah. the jets, brother. Yeah, well, I had to give you a listen. call and let you know about them jets. I'm on the I'm on the side with the commenter now. Y'all just like to lose at this point, but. I hope you I hope your winnings get better and uh hope hopefully I see you at the uh the Super Bowl, me and my husband. I hope you see, we see you at the Super Bowl, uh with the with the Buccaneers and the New York. That's my husband. He's annoying. Yeah, he wants y'all to go to Canada with New York Jets. He said you gotta be real good Americans to be over here and play in this league. So we go ahead, we gonna go ahead and watch the games out for y'all, and you know, make sure we stream you and we like you. But uh, you know, maybe suckers will meet the suckers in the in the Super Bowl, which will be Tampa Bay Bucks and New York Jets, or you know, whatever it is, you know. But I just wanted to give you right. a call, well, watch you now, and figure it out for you. So just give him my little input. All right. Well, thank you for calling in. It was good to hear from you. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching my stream and, and checking out my show. Look, you know, I, I salute you. You know, I have other fans of other fan bases as well that watch my show. Um, I understand, you know, if we're all going through tough times, but being a Jets fan right now is extremely tough, extremely, extremely tough. Lots of losing. We haven't won a game this season. <laughs> and we're I mean, still maybe, trying to fight. We're still trying to find our way. Think about getting a new coach or something. I mean, something got yeah. to give. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, I mean, it's pretty bad if you at least have one win, but she got zero. Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah. I, mean, that, I mean, that's pretty it, embarrassing. I feel sorry for the New Yorkers, but uh, get your shit together, buddy. Get your shit together. <laughs> we got to go. We we had to let her go. She started, started cursing salute to, the, to, salute to that caller, uh, but we don't allow cursing on my show. I want to thank them for calling in. No matter where you're watching me from, I truly appreciate it. Uh, you know, please keep watching, but we cannot allow cursing on the show. I had to get you out of here. But, you know, listen, I have callers that call me from across 
all kinds of different fan bases, you know, that love to uh, call in and, and, and talk to me about about this football team, and I truly enjoy it. But, uh, yeah, we have to let them go. You can't curse on my show. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, listen, this, this was a, quite a loss uh, to the, uh, you know, the Chargers today. It was tough. Um, but, like I said, there were some bright spots some things that we saw that, you know, we were excited about. We were extremely, extremely excited about. And going forward, you know, we need to continue to build on that. Um, but there was there was just some critical moments there that was like, uh, you know, maybe there are some things that we could we could do better. We could absolutely do better. The penalties, all that kind of stuff, you know, is really, really tough. Really, really tough. Um, really tough. So we're going to go back to the lines now. I'm going to keep going with the callers. 732, I'm coming directly to you. I want to get your thoughts about this loss today uh, to the Chargers by the New York Jets. How are you feeling about the play of Joe Flacco? Hey, Joe. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, no problem. Uh, so you look at the situation right now, man. The Jets, 0-10. Joe Flacco goes out there. I think he threw for like 200 yards. He also had an interception. How are you mm-hmm. feeling about him and the way he played today? Um, I mean, after the first play of the game by him, uh, we we know what happened there. I, I thought he was going to trend with the first two games that he played early this year, but, you know, he started to bounce mm-hmm. back. I think we finally were taking vertical deep shots in the second half. I don't know where that was in the first half, but, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Mims is starting to shine a little bit. I mean, you just got to let the ball go in the air with Mims, man. He he can get so many contested catches. I, I don't, I don't want to see Perryman get the ball as much because I don't know how big of a building block he is. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, like you said as well, I looked at the situation with Mims, and I was like, man, I just felt like he wasn't getting enough plays called his way. I felt like the Jets should have targeted him more because it seemed like mm-hmm. the, the the Chargers defense really could not deal with him. I mean, they could not deal with what he was doing out there. If he yep. wasn't making a catch, then he was definitely getting, you know, some type of pass interference call his way. I mean, do you think the Jets should have done more to try to get the ball in his hands? Oh, 100%, man. And like we said, you know, we're, we're 0-10 now, even entering this game. you got to play all the young guys. I mean, that's why, like, you know, if I see Frank Gore get another carry next week, it's just nauseating at this point. Like, Ty oh, Johnson was goodness. finally in the game. Ty Johnson was finally playing, yep. but, I mean, we have these random uh, back uh, receiving sets. I'm, I'm just like, like, where is he on just normal runs? I, I don't want to see Frank Gore at all anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that was blowing my mind as well, and I think we talk about that pretty much every week is, you know, Frank Gore – you know, is is still out snapping P Ryan. It's like, how is this? How it's how are crazy. you still getting more carries than P Ryan at this point? I don't get it. <laughs> this guy's almost oh, forty God. years old. What exactly are you trying <laughs> to build with this? I, you know, where are you going? Here? It, it makes it makes Adam Gay sleep peacefully. It makes Adam Gay sleep peacefully at night. That's I, that's has to be it. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's I a gay guy, as they my, call it. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it, it's mind-blowing. But I also want to get your thoughts on the penalties that we had in this game. Again, in critical spots, we're seeing, you know, us make big mistakes. The the Nathan Shepard uh, roughing the passer penalty, the Jordan Jenkins roughing the passer penalty, the the uh, the pass interference uh, call before the half that also helped, you know, the Chargers extend the drive and get into points. I mean, how are you feeling about those times, those crucial times in games where we just display some undisciplined play that truly cost us? Well, that's the thing, man. We're not going to be a good football team until we stop beating ourselves, and we haven't learned in the last year and a half how to do that. And, you know, the defense played well last year, but they're still undisciplined last year, but they're even worse uh, this year. I mean, Coach Williams, you know, they were playing well last year for him, but the roughing the passers is is starting to get embarrassing. It shows that we're a dirty team across the league. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Um, Another thing that I looked at as well coming into this game, we were all – wondering about it and trying to figure out how it would look was our secondary. And I thought our corners, Hall and, and Jackson, I thought they were decent on the day decent. early. You yep. know, yeah, yeah, there was, there was some tight coverage there. But I want to get your thoughts on this. How do you feel about Hall? Because Hall really made some big plays in this game. That tackle on Keenan Allen, you know, really kind of helped us out. It turned the tide Great right play. there because it, it deaded their drive. I mean, how, do we, how did you feel about his performance today? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he got picked on a little bit earlier on the game. But you know what, man? This is the time yeah. to learn. Get beat against big guys. And then you saw, I think he yeah. made his own adjustments, which is more adjustment than this whole coaching staff does altogether. But besides the point, uh, you know, I mean, he, he he got better as the game went on. He needs These are valuable reps. And that's why we need to see every single rookie get as many snaps as, as possible. Like, like, where is Cameron Clark, man? Like, like what is going on with that? Yeah, yeah. Are you another guy that that's looking at the situation and and especially with Morgan and thinking that we should see him at some point as well? Are you frustrated with the fact that we haven't seen uh, him out there either? Yeah, or or even even if it was Mike White, man. I mean, Flacco will not be here next year. Like I get, he's a he's a great back backup quarterback, right? No no question. But you could tell, you know, he was like this in. In Baltimore and Denver, he's not a mentor backup quarterback. You know, he's not like what McCown was doing. He's very all about me. I want to play. Like, he's not grooming the next guy. So, I think he's trying to start somewhere else. So, yeah, you got to get a young guy in here, man. And just imagine if we took another receiver in the fourth round, if this is what they're going to do with Morgan. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's tough. But I'll tell you what's even tougher. Watching Ficken. That, to me, oh, is – Oh, God. <laughs> Put Sergio <laughs> back in there. And, and why, I, yeah, can you that, tell me that, why did I, we have two? Why did we have two active well, ahead, kickers today? Ahead. Like, why do we have two people on the active roster kicking today? I, like, you couldn't demote one to the practice squad. Like, what is that? Like, we're the only team that I, doesn't know how to manage the roster. I, I just don't understand how exactly we put Thicken out there, knowing you know, even if he's not <laughs> the, the the missed extra points, the the bad way that he looked. Why is he even? Why is he even playing? Just let Sergio go out there and do his thing at this point, right? Exactly, and you know what I mean. Like you know, I know kickers like you know are tricky, but you go with the hot leg, man. Sergio was was nearly perfect. I'm pretty sure when he played the last couple of weeks. I mean, uh, and we we've seen Ficken when he's gone south last year. We, I, I don't want to revisit that. I mean, you know, you keep the hot guy. I, I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, but the one thing that the one tough, thing is man. though, we 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 could have had this game and had a whole nother possession at the end. Why did we call a timeout when the clock wasn't even moving, and like on before the fourth down play? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> like it's a joke, man. We literally invent new ways to lose. <laughs> we we do. I mean, you know, it's just it's just bad time management, bad coaching, bad play calling. I mean, I look at the especially early. It's like come on, you allow Flacco to come out, you call that route, he throws a pick six, then the return, you know, we come back, and the play calling for that drive was horrific. It was completely horrific. You, you <laughs> literally ran a screen on, like, third and 15. That was ridiculous. Was oh, my God. Completely <laughs> ridiculous, man. It's just it's to be honest, I don't, I don't it's even just, see, I don't even see Gase getting another job. I don't even know if he'll be a coordinator or an assistant coach. Like I don't know who 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 wants this guy to add to their team in any capacity. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I don't know, man. Did, did you see any of the uh, Gase's post game uh, comments today? No, not yet, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, 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 God. <laughs> I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek right here, right? All right, so they asked him, you know, was Dow Loggins, uh, did you take the play calling over from Dow in the second half? He's like, no, no, I, he, he has to confirm it with me first, and then I call it in. And Rich Samini's even like, are you saying that you have to double-check Dow's plays and then call it in? Isn't it just quicker instead of having a middleman? He's like, no, 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 we're just doing it for a week. I'm like, oh, this is just cha- chaotic at this point. <laughs> like, it's just, it's a, oh, my God, man. You, like, you're going to cringe watching the entire pre- post game because it's worse. It gets worse than that at certain points. But it's just like, oh, my yeah. God, are they really yeah. asking? He's like, this is where we're at. Yeah, well, I'm used to it. You know, every week it's, oh, we had a good week of practice and so on and so forth. I'm pretty yeah, <laughs> pretty used to it. You're a little older than me, point. Joe, but um, do you remember the Kotite years well, or was that not as much of your time? Yeah, no, that was, I, I don't remember them, but I did see film from those, and those years were horrific. <laughs> <laughs> those years were bad, though, but I was not around for those years. <laughs> but my God. Oh, lucky press both. Yeah, I was born in 96, Ooh. so I just avoided that, so... <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> those things were bad. <laughs> just seeing like some of the film from it, some of them. What in the world is going on here? Yeah, those years but were it's, bad. But I think, it's you know. sad though. But like, I think Gase is honestly wor- this, the Gase era is worse than the Kota era. I get we won seven games last year, but think about it. That the yeah. Kota era didn't have a young franchise quarterback in the making. We actively ruined one on in the Gase era. You know, there's fighting. Uh, like, there's like it feels like a civil war within the team. They're not going to say that, but you could tell that the team isn't like fully unified in that, on every front. It's, it's. I don't know. I just feel like the team's about to crack if they get the right opportunity. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen that in the past. We, hell, we've seen players come out and talk about, you know, gay. <laughs> Civil War, I mean, Quincy and New has come out and talked about the issues, you know, with gays in the locker room. We've had various players file against the team as well. We had Ad, uh, Jamal Adams yeah. came out and talked about, is it, I mean, it's, it's out there. Le'Veon Bell tweeting, you know, that nothing's wrong with them. And it was, you know, uh, Jamal Adams said that he had a problem with Adam Gaze as well. There was a, oh, yeah. No, they're all right. I mean, there. Even yeah. Jamal was right. He the way he handled his business, none of us can stand. But, I mean, he was technically right what he said. But oh my god, the way he handled it was horrible. But anyway, the, the one thing like I want to ask you is like, have you noticed this team mm-hmm. does not know how to manage injuries? Like, what is going on with putting players out that aren't a hundred percent week <laughs> after week? Quentin Williams went out for a few plays. Luckily, he stayed back. Beckton was out for several yeah. snaps. I I mean, luckily he came back, but I probably would have sat back in other cautious anyway. Like, where are we going that we have to keep rushing players back? It happened to Sam twice already. This year we did it to bell earlier this year we've done it to beckton uh this year we've done it to a couple of players last year i mean like who is making these final saves on on, on all these injuries with these players that aren't 100 percent? yeah you know that that is the big question it's, it's like you said as well we see, <laughs> yeah we, we've seen that but we, we you know we we've seen you know players come out and talk about that in the past as well but this year it's been put on blast yet again like you talk about the stuff with beckton where he clearly was not healthy we clearly saw that his shoulder had big time issues and he was still put out there. It's just there's so many issues. Hell, Sam, even Sam having issues with um, his shoulder too. He hasn't he been the same since the there. Denver game, man. He has he would never recovered yeah. from Denver, man. They'll never say he never recovered from Denver. And that's why I think why you yeah. saw some tough performances at times. He was never his hundred percent self, uh, since that week four. Uh, that's what I believe. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, a shame. Uh, listen, I mean, I his, thank you. His, his parents should be like, Sam, get out of here as soon as possible. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm Sam Darnold's number one fan, but if he gets traded, I don't think he's going to be that upset. I mean, he'll probably be like, oh, fresh start is just what I need. I think, you know, Colts is personally his best destination, or you got the Niners, uh, a couple of places like that. But I, I love the kid. I've met him before, actually, in person once. Uh, really, really down to earth guy, even off camera and all that stuff. So I just want the best for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see going forward. I think there's some things we can do to help build around them, but you know, there's a lot of questions to be answered, especially continuing to go down the stretch of this uh, this season with them. So we'll see what happens. But man, listen, I want to thank you for calling in. I want to get back thank to you. the rest of these callers. It was good to speak to you, my friend. Again, when I have our next show, please call in, man. You're a heck of a caller. You know your stuff. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, my my first time, and it was it was a blast. And you and your family be well, and have a ha- happy Thanksgiving. No, same to you, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a happy Thanksgiving as well. Enjoy Take yourself, care. all right? Be safe. Ooh, phenomenal call right there. Phenomenal call. That guy knew what he was talking about, knew his stuff. Man, listen, it's tough, man. It is tough. It is tough being a fan of this football team. It is really tough, but there's going to be a lot of questions answered as the season continues to roll on. Lots of questions. A lot of things that you know, we're trying to figure out, hey, what works, what doesn't. There's going to be a lot more young guys playing in certain positions and spots. And uh, we're going to see what's going to happen. So I want to wrap up the show, folks. Listen, I want to thank everyone for calling in to, uh, you know, the radio show today. It was phenomenal to speak to everyone, even the trolls. You know what I'm saying? I'll get you out of here as quick as possible. Do not call into my show, Curse, and I'll get you out of here. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, it was great to speak to everybody, uh, get everybody's take. Um, I want to thank everybody for listening. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. I'm also on Twitter as well at YoungJ000. That's three zeros. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me? No issues. I'm the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will troll you right back, okay? I'll go back and forth, I'm telling you. And I'll have my Darnold jersey on as well. I don't know, you know, if people saying he's going to come back next week. I hope he is, you know. I hope he's 100%. Uh, if he is 100%, I would like to see him out there, see what happens. If he's not, let's sit him until he's ready. But either way, I will have that Darnold jersey on, all right? You can also uh, follow my show's Twitter as well at the Long Beach Joe. That's on Twitter as well. Uh, you know, follow me. Go back and forth. I love going back and forth with everyone. I'm also, you know, on YouTube as well at Long Beach Joe Jets. Long Beach Joe Jets. All my content's there. That's where you catch me streaming as well. 
uh, stream my, my shows live, uh, you know, talk to people live, uh, you know, stream, uh, watch games with everybody live. We watch other stuff too. Uh, we know we play video games as well. So, you know, please come over and join us there. Subscribe to that channel, turn on your notifications. Um, and as always, folks, when you see me in person, okay, and you will see me eventually in person, it is arms out, chest open, free hugs for everyone, okay? The hugs are absolutely free, all right? The hugs are free, especially in this time as Jets fans. We got to show love to each other. The hugs will always remain free. I will charge you nothing. So I want to thank you folks for listening. You folks have a good one. Peace. Yeah.